the rapture, Jordan. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there is the concept of the rapture, which they kind of explain here, you know, about this idea of ascending, and we we know what we're talking about here. Uh, they want to know where that idea comes from, because they do not recall reading about it in the Bible. That that's right. that's the whole question. They don't recall reading <clears throat> about it in the book, Bible. Yeah, there was a book, a very scholarly, well put together a scholarly book. Uh, came out many years ago and I, and I got a hold of it as soon as it came out because I know about these uh, subjects and so when I saw it, I thought that there's an interesting book. It was called The Rapture Cult and it explained the story of where the rapture idea came from. And so <clears throat> the idea basically was what the Apostle Paul was talking about. Once you see the light on something, you are changed forever. Instantly, you are changed once you see something. And you may be going through life in the dark, but once you actually, for the first time, realize the actual truth of what you're seeing, then it will change your life and you'll be totally different. You'll be totally different once you see it. And so in the book, The Rapture Cult, the author talked about where the rapture idea came from. And he brought it back to in England. Uh, many, many years ago, there was a very extraordinarily wealthy lady who <clears throat> was very, very religious, and she was giving large sums of money to the church. And when, she, and she, but she ended up being uh, an alcoholic who was experiencing the DTs. <clears throat> she was beginning to see things because she was an alcoholic, a confirmed alcoholic. And she had all kinds of strange experiences because she was going through withdrawals or whatever. And But she was still very wealthy, and her money was still spendable. And so the church always uh, respected her because she is the money of the church. She's financing the whole operation. Mm -hmm. And so they never said anything. They didn't try and do much to help her with her alcoholism. But they didn't mind taking the money that she was giving up. Oh, well, they, and, they never and, criticize and, the people that are actually paying their bills. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah, she's the one that was paying all the bills, so the church went along with it. And let her, let her be a drunk. It, uh, not going to change her, but if you if you try and stop her and try and clean her up, she's going to be very angry, and uh, and the money's going to be shut off, and that's it. So just mind your own business. Let her be what she wants to be. As long as the checks are coming, don't bar- don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. And so she had a vision from the Lord, she said, when she was three sheets to the wind. She was an alcoholic, and when she was totally three sheets to the wind, she had a vision from the Lord, and the Lord told her that when you pass away, you're going to be raptured into heaven. And that was the word that she said the Lord told her. Mm-hmm. That she would be raptured and she's going to go to heaven from the earth. There will come a day when it's time for her to go and she will go directly into heaven. That's what the Lord told her after the bottle of, of whiskey. And, uh, and so she kept ranting and raving about that to the clergyman in the church that you need to teach this to the people. There's going to be a rapture. And I know because the Lord told me last night, after I finished those two bottles off, the Lord talked to me and he told me there was going to be a rapture. Mm. And so it was actually an old lady, a wealthy old lady in England, uh, as from what I can remember from the book came out, out in the 60s. <clears throat> but it was an old lady in England who, uh, and the book is called The Rapture Cult. See if you can find it on the web. You might be able to order it from, from uh, the bookstore. The Rapture Cult. And she talked about how she told the clergy, look, I'm financing this church, or you teach the people what I'm telling you. You tell them there's going to be a rapture, and they're going to be raptured into heaven. And uh, and so the church clergymen, they started letting her talk, and they started promoting it. And it got to be so... Uh, so interesting and so delightful. Other churches began teaching it. Before you know it, it was going all around town. This old lady's money had really struck a a, a nerve, and she was teaching the rap- the rapture, and everybody else started teaching the rapture. 
And so the churches, they don't care one way or the other if it's true or not. They just go along with the get along because after all, it's just a, it's just a business. The church is in entertainment and that's what the people want to hear. So we will tell them. We will tell them and it will in, inculcate that into our teachings. So before you know it, the whole idea of the rapture became the, the thing to do, the, the subject to talk about. And so Christians were talking about the rapture, when in point of fact, it was a drunk old lady with her money that caused the rapture to be taught. And it's in a book, and it's, got, and it's not the only book, incidentally. There have been other books written on the subject. Right. But that was the first one I came across called The Rapture Cult. And, uh, I think there's and some, read it. Get it and read it yourself. I think there's some interesting uh, material on this as well at uh, Christianism dot com, which is a website that uh, you yeah. highly recommend as well. Uh, and and you, you'll find information about this. Uh, the, the the rapture. It's an interesting story. Um, and here's here's the odd part about this. Even in these, uh, you know, the delusions of a drunken woman or some of the uh, fables that are made up. It, you know, it, there, there, there's a lesson. <laughs> there's a lesson and there's an interesting element that's usually built into them, like the concept of the rapture in the first place. Right, Jordan? Um, mm-hmm. The idea of ascent into heaven. Well, a couple of reasons why there's an ascent into the heavens or into heaven itself. Well, that's where God is. I mean, according to everybody, ask a child like you say, where's God? They'll point upward to the sky. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um you know, there's that, but there's also the idea of ascent that existed before Christianity, the concept of ascending, the concept of rising, the concept of being uplifted, lifting up. And indeed, when you do gain knowledge or when you do gain happiness, when you do, you can feel literally uplifted. I mean, yeah, it's built into our language, too. But uh, but what I'm saying is that it goes beyond that. There is a feeling of uh, being larger, being, you know, radiating almost, right? I mean, the concept of being thrilled. All of these things lend themselves to this concept of the ascent. So it's no wonder that, I mean, it might have been an alcohol poisoned, uh, fueled <laughs> bit of imagination from this lady that started the concept. But the, the idea here is that a lot of people believe that, you know, this is something they're waiting to just randomly happen at some point. You know, it's going to occur when the signs are right. When the end of the world comes, the good people are going to be raptured and everybody else is going to be here to face the, the horrors, the terrors, right? Uh, yeah. you know, and, 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 but there's and always people some love truth. that. People yeah. love that. That's wonderful. That's wonderful to know that I'm going to be getting out of here and you guys stay here and suffer through it and I'm going to go into heaven with the Lord. Mm. I'm going to go with Lord Jesus and I'm going to be in heaven. And, and it's going to be very, un, uh, it's going to be very disappointing when you find out there is no Lord in heaven. There is no Jesus. There is no Lord in heaven. It's a symbolic story of the war between light and darkness. And you're in the dark and you're still in the dark. And I'm trying to enlighten you, but you don't want to hear somebody who's, who's trying to enlighten you. So you're saying, give us Barabbas in your head. Give us the, the lie. We want to hear the wonderful story. We don't want to hear the truth and the light. <clears throat> so, well, but anyway. It also gets you know, into this idea, though, that there's advantages, right? Because that, that, that's an interesting thing that, that kind of just went through this whole discussion so far. This idea that you gain an advantage. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if you're, uh, if you're a Jew, you're, you're one of the chosen people. You're, you're separate. You're special, right? If you right. give money to that preacher on TV, hey, he's got a spot for you in heaven. You know, I mean, Visa or MasterCard, you can buy it. Uh, but, but you have a special place. If you, uh, you know, follow these certain things, well, then you might get to actually rise up into the air and disappear with the rest of us. You know, you, you get to come along and be part of the club. Mm-hmm. That's right, and that's what we love. Humans love that to be part of the group. We mm-hmm. want to be loved by our fellow man. We want to be appreciated, respected by our fellow man. And I said that on one of our very first, very first shows I did. I brought that out. How right. children in school do not like to be laughed at and mocked because they don't know their lesson. They didn't study. They didn't do their homework, and now that the teacher is calling upon them, and they have to go up to the blackboard and do a problem for this for the class, 
that they're supposed to have studied the night before, but they didn't do their homework, and now all the kids in the class are going to laugh at this at this poor child because he didn't do his homework and he doesn't know how to do what he's supposed to be doing. So then they're laughing at him, and no child wants to be laughed at and mocked by the class. Well, the same thing is true with adults. No adults like to be laughed at and ridiculed for being stupid because they said something dim-witted and stupid, and people are laughing at him, and now they mock him and laugh at him. Nobody likes to be mocked and laughed at because they said something foolish or stupid. And so that's why we don't say anything. We just keep our mouths shut, and we go along to get along with the group. Wherever all of our friends are going, that's where we'll go. And whatever our friends are listening to, that's what we want to hear. Whatever our friends are, are eating, that's what we'll have. And so we want to be part of the group. We don't want to be laughed at and mocked by our fellow man and and put into a, into a position where people are laughing at you. And that's typical of humans. We don't like being mocked and laughed at. We want to be appreciated by our fellow man. So we want to go to the ball game with everybody. When they're all drinking beer and going to the Going to the ball game, we'll go too, so we can be a part of them, and they'll love us. And that's why the scripture says, if you continue to run with your friends after you learn the real truth, uh, then then you're going to find out they don't want you. They not they don't like you. They don't want you around them. Why? Because you know things they don't know, and you don't go with them to the ball games. You don't go with them to the beer drinking. You don't party with them. You don't have anything to do with them, and they know it, and they know that they are stupid, and they know that you're smart, and they don't want anything to do with you. And so this is why Jesus said, what they have done to me, they will do to you. If you start studying and educating yourself, and you find out the real truth, and the, and you are in the light, and you now got the light and the truth, you're going to find out that the slave is no greater than the master. What they have done to me, the son, they will do to you. Because the sun brings light into the world, and we kill God's son. We nail him to a stake because we don't want to hear the truth and the light. Mm-hmm. 